Um, my name is Fred Kithinzi. I'm the founder of Valva Digital. I'm also the host of this conversation today. Um, our theme is Couch and Connect. And we're going to talk about Twitter Amplify, basically bringing the power of Twitter and TV together. We have a great speaker and moderator. Um, sorry, we have a, two great speakers. I'll let them introduce them very briefly. Uh, but before we get into it, um, uh, basically this conversation will take about an hour. Um, the speakers will take us through a session of about 30 minutes uh, and through the agenda of the day. And then the second half of the conversation will be Q&A. So feel free to ask any questions, send in your chats. And then um, at the end of it, you know, of course, we'll, um, we'll summarize that. Um, so I'll hand over to Chantal. I think you can briefly introduce yourself and Stella. And then we, we kick this off. So excited. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. It really is a privilege. I've been super excited about um, speaking to you guys. Um, yesterday was a public holiday in South Africa. We celebrated Youth Day. And I didn't take a long weekend because I wanted to talk to you guys. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you're keeping well. So as you can see, I'm Chantal Herbst. I'm the head of Amplify for Twitter, and I look after the entire African region. So what's really cool is that I get to do some really cool things in Africa. And I do that with some great partners like Stella, who happens to actually be on the ground, Stella over there. Stella's going to introduce um, the deck to us, take us through a couple of things, Twitter, and then we're going to look at kind of the movements that we're seeing brought on by COVID, but we're also going to look at just the environment that we're in and the shifts that we're seeing, and I'm hopefully going to unpack some really cool ideas with you for Twitter Amplify. So over to you, Stella's. Um, hi, my name is Stella. I'm the Twitter client partner for East Africa. And today I'm going to give you reasons as to why Twitter is the answer to solve your business challenges. We'll look as to why Twitter, we'll look wide as to why Twitter from an advertiser and audience perspective. And we'll quickly touch on who is the Kenyan Twitter user. And lastly, look at how you can connect with what's happening on Twitter. But first, uh, let's have some fun. Get out your phones and tweet something that you're grateful for. Remember to use the hashtag grateful and tag at Dynamo and at Belva Digital. Hope you guys are tweeting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tagging Adano and I'll be to if you tag both of those, we'll be able to find one of your tweets. We randomly are going to select one tweet and send you some swag. Yes. So there has been more than 265 million tweets uh, since the beginning of March, around the 15th, and people are saying what they're thankful for and what they're grateful for. Life has changed and we've had to rethink uh, our strategies, our values, what are we going to do now that we're stuck indoors. And if you've tweeted out, I'm sure you have a nice little surprise. Do you see it? Our, hash, our grateful emoji. <laughs> so what's really cool is this is a unique emoji that was created purely because of the volumes of conversations that we were seeing globally around this time. We're seeing people reflect and truly be grateful. So Lucy Gatimo was looking for a job sometime earlier this year. And her story is one of the most inspiring stories I think I've come across Kenyan Twitter in 2020. So she gave up on looking for a job and decided, you know what, I'm going to become a mama fua. But then she was struggling to find customers and a friend of hers was like, why don't you try social media? And she went on to Twitter and a simple tweet turned into a trend firing up Kenyans to support a fellow citizen in need. And Ariel jumped onto it and they were like, you know what, we're going to give you sponsorship, we're going to give you products, we're going to 
take your kids to school. We are going to give them brand new uniforms. And they created something that was so powerful when it comes to brand love and awareness. People loved it. They felt connected to her story. And by tweeting around the story, they were able to share a beautiful experience. And now Lucy has around 1,600 followers and they form a part of her biggest clientele on Twitter. Up to a week, she even attempts, she gets fully booked up and you can see some brands, other brands have jumped on and done some nice creatives for her. And this is maybe a testament as to why and how powerful Twitter is. People come to Twitter to stay informed and stay connected with what's happening. Think about the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning or somebody tells you on WhatsApp, this is happening in town. What do you do? You're like, you don't go to watch the news. You don't wait for the seven o'clock news. The first thing you do is get onto Twitter to find out what is happening. What is this hashtag that is going on? What has Sonko done? And the most important thing to note is that the current situation is anything that happens every day on Twitter is a marketing opportunity for you. It's relevant and people are on Twitter to stay connected and be and find out more information. Now let's look at why Twitter from an advertiser and audience perspective. It's real life, it's real thoughts, it's real time. I'm sure you've tweeted a lot of things like, oh, I just finished the last episode of Insecure, amazing. And because Twitter is what's happening in the world and what people are talking about, it makes our platform very unique and the people on the platform are what makes Twitter unique because they're the ones who lean in, they lead the way and they shape culture. And these people have powerful implications for your business. They are actually actively driving conversations that shape culture. For example, Black Lives Matter is still going on together at home. Sonko was a conversation for so long. He was even on the Trevor Noah Daily Show. And there are plenty of platforms if you're looking to reach an audience that is in a look at me mode. That's okay, but that's not where things start. And that's not what people do on Twitter. On Twitter, people are saying, look at this. Things start on Twitter because the audience is not made up of passive passengers. They're active, they're driving conversations and they shape cultures on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is why the audience is valuable. Three things that make the audience valuable. Their influence, their receptivity, and with this, they drive results for your brands. Twitter connects you with the most valuable audiences when they're the most receptive. So start with them. Let's take a look at to what is the Kenyan Twitter landscape like? In terms of our demographic profile, our audience is mostly male skewed, but still has a strong female presence. And the majority of our audience sits between the ages of 16 and 34. They are living in urban areas and suburban locations. If you look at the regions, and these guys have disposable income or the buying power within their homes. And they make the Twitter audience is about 61% of the total social media users in Kenya. And people use Twitter, 91% use it uh, for brand research and 65% of the audience on Twitter see, find out about, the, about brands from ads they've seen on Twitter. And on average, we spend about one to three hours on Twitter. So how do you win on Twitter? There are two ways Twitter can help you. You can use it to launch something new or connect to what's happening. Now, when it comes to launching something new, think about how many launches do you have coming up this year? It could be something as simple as a new future, you've changed the packaging. These are some of the most important brand moments and it's critical for you to get it right. Only 15% of launches are remembered. Why don't you then use Twitter to launch with 
a valuable audience that is respect receptive and it works it worked for Heinz. I don't know if you know about this, but Heinz, the Heinz company announced yesterday, they have a new condiment, supposedly by popular demand. And that condiment, can we get a drum roll? Okay. This week, Heinz announced that they're coming out with a new product that combines ketchup and mayonnaise. It's called Mayo Chup. Heinz tweeted this, uh, a survey saying, want Mayo Chup in stores? 500,000 votes for yes, and we'll release it to you saucy Americans. Right now, it's pretty split. 55% say yes. Yes, Mayo Chup. A single word that truly captures what our nation is all about. Mayo Chup. Mayo Chup. Mayo Chup. <laughs> Now we have to decide what to use it on or with, or this is all too much. <laughs> wow. So on Twitter, good content and campaigns travel extremely fast. It's the whole nature of discovery and sharing that drives this. And because of the live public and conversational nature of the platform, one piece of content can be seen by millions of people in a few minutes on Twitter. Further to that, content just doesn't stay on Twitter. We're seeing campaigns appear all over Twitter on your then seven o'clock news on the newspaper, other platforms talking about campaigns. Nowadays, when you're listening to the radio, radio channels are listing the top trending hashtags. They're also, they're like, hashtag us, let's have a conversation on Twitter. So why wouldn't you want to launch with the most audience, with the most receptive audience, Let's talk about connecting to your audience. There are various ways you can connect to an audience on Twitter. For example, Madaraka Day, Easter, Christmas, all these are opportunities for your brand to connect on Twitter about uh, cultural events that people care about, or it could be sports, it could be music, it could be fashion. And the next slide is a perfect connect opportunity that a Kenyan brand took advantage of. Now, through hard work and discipline, he's pointing. Come on, he says. Elia Kipchoge has the hand of history on his shoulder. He has less than 200 meters to go. Elia Kipchoge, let's keep an eye on the clock. Into the final 20 seconds. Elia Kipchoge. Whoa! On his shoulder. Whoa. Safaricom saw the ideal opportunity to enable its subscribers and Kenyans to rally behind one of our biggest sports stars. Elliot Kipchoge was attempting to run a marathon under the two hour park, and the run was dubbed Ineos 159. Leveraging Twitter, Safaricom wanted to connect Kenyans to Kipchoge and the rest of the world. They saw an opportunity that, that would unite the country and connect the brand with a cause all Kenyans would support. It used the opportunity to show that it was behind Kipchoge by redesigning their Mpesa logo. I'm sure you saw it, it was very exciting. They even did those cool billboards with the new Elliot logo that, but you know it's the Mpesa logo, but it was Elliot. And they launched the Elliot 159 campaign four days before the race. They used a custom emoji that would show up whenever anyone tweeted using the hashtag one, Elliot 159. 
the emoji became a part of conversation beyond the race and allowed M-Pesa and Safaricom to connect with Kipchoge's record attempts. And the results, 12 billion impressions worldwide. That's really amazing. And an 85.5% positive brand sentiment. I don't think I've ever seen such an amazing brand sentiment. And 1.5 million engagements. Safaricom's hashtag did not just, they took over the sponsor hashtag and they trended in Kenya for three days. And additionally, the campaign reached celebrities and global brands joined in the conversation generating, generated by the campaign. I think that's pretty amazing. So how do we make sure that your brand is, on, is winning on Twitter? Number one, build relevance to drive purchase. Make sure you're starting with the right audience. Reinforce your message. Choose products for your goals. If you're running a website campaign, are you using website cards? And use strong creative. As we said, good creative makes your campaign go further and drives engagement on the platform. Over to you, Chantel. Thank you, Stella. Guys, I wanna start off by welcoming us to our new normal. Um, most of us, I'm sure, are calling from homes or couches, and we've really just changed. So please, I can't see you, but raise your hand if you've had to rethink your marketing calendar this week or this last month. <laughs> Guys, don't worry. I'm pretty sure everyone's hand is up because we know that it's crunch time. And we know that consumers' behaviors are constantly changing and shifting, and we've seen this in a really short amount of time. And what's really cool is Twitter is always there. Um, fun tweets. I picked two of my favorites. So it's my birthday and I'm in quarantine. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have experienced this. Happy birthday if you have experienced your birthday in quarantine. And then another tweet here from Alex. My six-year-old hanging out with me while I work from home. Lots of video calls. And tonight at dinner, throwing a tantrum, I turned to him and say, I asked him to stop throwing that tantrum. And he turned to me and said, are you giving me feedback? <laughs> I think this really resonated with me because we get feedback all the time. And now, if you do have children, you possibly are getting feedback from them. So where this really sits is in media consumption. So because we're spending more time at home, we're not traveling as much, we're having a lot more time to consume media. So what Nielsen expected before COVID was released or COVID happened, what Nielsen was expecting and what they released was that they were expecting media consumption to jump about 60%. What's really cool is that it's actually possibly done more than that. When I look at the news vertical here in South Africa, we've seen a 200% increase in how many people are consuming news. And it's really phenomenal to see these numbers happening. What we're also seeing is that the daily active users on Twitter kind of coincided with this. So in Q3, we saw an uplift of 23% in the active daily users that we were seeing. So there's a correlation between the two. I think where I want to stop and have a look with you guys is where TV and Twitter really work hand in hand. And I think to start that off is to start at what is the impact of COVID been? So Stella mentioned, this isn't a marketing opportunity. We don't see COVID as a marketing opportunity, but we do want to understand what's happening because it does affect our customers and our consumers. So what we've seen overall is a big movement to virtual events. We're seeing broadcasters pivot to digital. So things that they would have had live, they now have digital. Events that they would have had are now digital. So What's amazing is that Twitter is that stadium. So where we'd normally all go watch football in a stadium, we're seeing people come to Twitter to watch it and experience and connect together. I think what we've also seen in these shifts, I'm going to name seven of them. So we've seen major events and sporting events canceled. We've seen majority of theme parks and closes. We've seen film premieres and releases delayed. We've seen, covets, um, we've seen companies pivot to digital and on demand. We've seen filming suspended, 
We've seen shows go completely digital. The Trevor Noah show that Stella mentioned earlier is completely digital at the moment. And we're also seeing people who normally keep their news behind pay gated walls now giving that news away for free. A big thing within Africa and according to Kantar, sporting and sponsorships does the best for brand recognition within an African context. And we see this portraying itself when you know that pan-Africanly, the biggest recognized brands are your Coca-Colas, your Nikes, your Adidas, and those aren't traditional African brands. So what they are doing really well is their exceptional tie-in to sponsorships. So we're wondering, hey, what's happening with sports? So the sports users are still there. They're just doing things a little bit differently. So instead of watching sports, they're now watching a bit more news or they're gaming a little bit more. We're also seeing them spend more time just watching traditional TV. So in all of this, what are brands stepping up and doing? So this is a great example from Supersport. Guys, I'm South African. There is never going to be a point where I will not brag about the Rugby World Cup. <laughs> so please forgive me. <laughs> so this is a really cool example of the Rugby World Cup. And this was Sio Khaleesi. And what Supersport did was they went and relived that moment. Um, that was such a pride for our country. And what this was, was a piece of content of Sio Khaleesi speaking about what he used to do before the game kicked off, before he had to toss that coin. Um, and it was really insightful. And it just shows us that we can, yes, we might not have sport, okay, sport starting to come back with the EPL starting soon, but we haven't had sport for two months. We've seen people slap each other as sport. Like there have been some, people are dying for sport. So it's really cool to see these things happen. So it's important to recognize that all of this requires navigation from all of us. We've all got to think differently because things aren't as they normally were. So some of the ways that, le that media is leading this way in the space is we're seeing conversations about streaming services increase. So just in February, we saw an 81% uplift in the conversations happening around streaming. He has one of those tweets. So in order to self-quarantine and social distance, I believe that Netflix has the moral duty to release five more seasons of The Witcher. So it really speaks to that connection opportunity. So here are a few other ways brands are stepping up. So we're seeing brands release their release dates a little bit earlier. So Disney Plus was due to release Frozen, I think, two months um, after this date, but they brought that up and actually released it in March. We're seeing brands be social. So just because we're social distancing doesn't mean we need to be antisocial. We can still be social together within our homes. And we're seeing this with Queen Bee and things like Homecoming on Netflix. We're seeing an uplift of the watch parties. So something that I know that happens uh, on a Thursday is in Kenya, you guys will watch movies together and there's a bit of a hashtag going. So it's really cool to see that these global things are also happening um, throughout our countries. We're also seeing brands host virtual premieres. So your likes of New York Fashion Week, we're expecting that all of the red carpet moments are going to now happen in the designers' homes and you're gonna experience their closets with them. So things aren't being canceled, they really are just changing. And these are traditional things that we would be watching on TV or that brands would be connecting or aligning with. We're also seeing concerts come to your couch. So you can sit on your couch and watch your favorite band and engage with your favorite band or your favorite music. So what we really are is connecting to what's happening. And you're there when the audience is receptive and they're leaned in because they care about the things that they're talking about. And one of the ways to tap into that is Twitter Amplify. And that's what I'm going to go through now. And then Fred's going to lead us in a bit of a question session. So Twitter Amplify is the way to connect to the brands and what people care about right now. So when Stella was talking earlier, she mentioned great content. And great video content does exceptionally well on Twitter. 
And the reason that it does well is because of that mindset people are coming in. So it's more, more attentive, more responsive, and more trusting, which makes a video on Twitter twice as memorable. So what Twitter Amplify is, is the alignment of premium video content to the top most relevant publishers to target your audience and what they're already watching. So this is where it fits in that space that it can be something you do while you do TV or something you do instead of just TV. And I'll unpack that nicely now. So what I'm going to show you is a nice example. Guys, um, you might have seen in the mo at the moment on Super Sports, um, well, not at the moment, while the EPL was happening, that there's a lot of stuff apps are doing in your markets. And um, they're the first brand to launch in Kenya. So it's been really exciting to see their results and what they're doing. And once this campaign is done, I'm hoping to do an African case study. So as soon as that's been released and signed off by clients, definitely share it with you. But for now, we're going to look at a South African example. So this was Supersport TV. And what Standard Bank has is an alignment with cricket. So what the client and what the brand gave me was a six second starting pre-roll. So you can see it over here. What Amplify is, is the best content from the best publishers. So where my role sits is that I negotiate, negotiate on behalf of your clients, behalf of you, behalf of what your brands are doing, and I will negotiate with the broadcasters and the publishers to get us the best of the best content. What then happens is it is tweeted out like this, and what you see is the brand pre-roll on top of your really cool content. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So six second brand pre-roll. Yeah, the crazy thing about this ground is how small it is, straight. Um, so when you're standing out there batting, like you, you have to remind yourself that you can't. And a really great piece of content from Supersport. Yeah, the crazy thing about this ground is how small. And that's it. You're building brand alignments and brand equity off of what is already being created. What's fantastic is it really is brand partnerships. So. This didn't happen overnight. Twitter have been working on this for years. And I work with Anis Manel. He sits in the Dubai office. So we often get some really cool global opportunities. Think Olympics next year. There are so many opportunities for your brand to connect. So DSTV and Supersport are two of our biggest local ones. But we do have a partnership with over 950 different audiences and broadcasters. We're also seeing other brands innovate in a new space. So Investec is another brand in South Africa, a banking brand, and they saw a unique opportunity where most of their clients actually sit in the health working space. They have a specific product that looks after health workers. So they saw an opportunity to align with current news and thank the current staff that were on the ground and on the front line fighting and they created a brand piece of content and put it in front of news. So what we're seeing is that when it comes to Twitter and TV, we know that they work hand in hand. I sit with the screen, this is often my first screen and my TV is my second screen, but I sit on both at the same time. I join the conversations here and I watch what's happening here. So what we're seeing is that Twitter Amplify gives you an ex an incremental reach of 6% when you're looking at TV campaigns and a 25% um, increase in the younger audience. So you're 18 to 24. And the reason that is, is that younger audience isn't traditionally watching TV like they used to. So we call these people cord cutters. These are people that are now watching on their mobile or have a laptop that they watch off. They aren't watching traditional TV. What's really great is we've done some studies and what we've seen is when you're doing Twitter Amplify and you're doing your TV, that we're seeing great results and we're seeing some really cool understandings come from this. So if you have just a TV ad, you're getting X. If you're having a TV ad plus a Twitter ad, on terms of ad engagement, you're getting about an 18% uplift. And in terms of memory, you're getting about 13% uplift. And it really is 
those cool examples of brand alignment and building equity through the ability to connect. So just to reiterate, it's the most valuable audience when they're most receptive. Twitter Amplify gives you premium brand safe inventory with guaranteed viewability and we have the proven results. I'm going to share some case studies with you guys after this with Fred and you guys can have a look at some of those global case studies. So we've got multiple global opportunities. We've got tons of local opportunities. So think Big Brother Africa, Date My Family, um, UCL. I know that wrestling is also quite big. So there's lots of opportunities. This is what the package looks like. There are various packages at different levels. So these would be something that I would tailor for your brand. So you would go, hi Chantel, I have X brand that has this sponsorship, what can we do? I'll then look through the different publishers, the different rights and restrictions, and I'll build you a specific package. So this is what a package looks like. And I've just included in here how it works. So you pick a single clip, you put it into standard Twitter campaign, and this year has been such an amazing. The pre-roll works. This year has been such an amazing year being part of this. So what Twitter Amplify does is it increases your overall awareness. It increases your influential audience and it drives that conversation amongst that influential audience at the right time, complementing your TV and sponsorship buys. But you don't have to have a TV or sponsorship buy to have a Twitter Amplify campaign. So yes, it fits into the, Twitter, the TV and Twitter world, but it, you don't have to have a TV campaign to run an Amplify campaign. So it really is the best of both worlds. So three takeouts that I'd love for you guys to take from this conversation is that the physical and virtual world are merging an expended rate. So we knew this was gonna happen. We knew that eventually we'd be able to work from home. But what this virus has brought up along is this expended rate and we're doing things a lot quicker. Twitter is great at two things, launching and connecting. And Twitter Amplify is the way to connect with what's happening. And the best way to predict the future is to invent it. It's one of my favorite Alan Key quotes. I'm going to say it again before we hand back to Fred because I love talking. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. Um, that's really wonderful. Thank you, Stella. A lot of insights, you know, you've shared with us. Um, I believe we're in a better place when it comes to managing our brands on, you know, Twitter, being able to really connect with the audiences. I think there's never been a more important time to connect and build meaningful relationships um, with, with our target consumers.